Sleep Coats into the conversation here from the Flyers Radio Network. The Flyers and the Carolina Hurricane tonight. And uh, Steve Coates will be on the call with Mr. Tim Saunders. Coatsy, how are you? Great, Michael. How are you and Pete doing? I'm okay. Pete's a little gassy. Ah, thanks. <laughs> oh, my God. Just the thought of that. <laughs> Where do you go? <laughs> you know what? I think you might have to start moving into a different studio. <laughs> different studios for a reason. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Uh, yeah. A lot we, of people don't understand in this business we're in the same room. That's right. We're sitting right next <laughs> to each other, so it's uncomfortable. <laughs> He's got a smile on his face. I'm, I'm just grinning from ear to ear. Coach, you, you and Tim Saunders are uh, very close to each other up in the booth, uh, uh, but he, he likes it hot and you like it cold, right? Not um, – Let's put it this way. We both like to be comfortable, and the ice arenas are very cold, so we have uh, uh, alternative ways of staying warm between long underwear and heaters. <laughs> what? You... No. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm not going to deny that I, we, we wear long underwear. In the so, broadcast uh, booth? Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, wow, who knew? Some of these buildings, some of these buildings, this building here is very cold. Uh, New York's very cold. Uh, you know, we pick and choose. When you did the game last year at Heinz Field, were you indoors? Oh, that was the awful there broadcast. Were, was yeah, there. that wasn't even – yeah, we were indoors there, yeah. Yeah, we were inside an encased area. In fact, we looked like we were in some kind of museum. <laughs> I remember seeing you there. I just didn't remember if it was indoors or outdoors, but uh, – Yeah, we were indoors. We were right. indoors. Hey, you got uh, Carolina tonight. <laughs> Flyers putting their 12-game points. Hey, Michael. Yes, Michael, sir. Sure. Michael, I got to say that is a great way. I think we got off to a really good start today talking about Pete's gas. <laughs> Because from a man that size, I want you to think about the problem he has. I have a great diet. That is. I see food, I eat it. Right, Cozy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go after it. Yeah, get after that food. All right. Uh, <laughs> Flyers put their 12-game point streak on the line tonight against Carolina. Their longest point streak since November of 2003. Uh, but, hey, as many points as they've racked up, they're all equally as important moving forward because, Coatsy, now, okay, you're in the playoffs. It looks like you're going to make the playoffs. But now the importance of being the top seed in the Metro as opposed to number two or number three is a big difference. It's interesting how you can go from trying to make the playoffs to all of a sudden becoming a little bit more greedy and trying to win the the uh, the division. And that's what basically happened. I mean, uh, this hockey team came together. When, hard to really say where the trigger point was, probably happened after the 10-game losing streak where they went out Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, won all three games, gained some momentum, and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> the likes of a Travis Konechny, who was off to a terrible start this year, Nolan Patrick, we're looking at him like, how could he be the number two draft pick? That's unbelievable. Both those guys now are contributing on a major level, so that makes you so much more competitive at the, the top end. Your top-end players are playing like top-end players. Borchek, Giroux, Simmons is out right now, but he was certainly in that wheelhouse. On top of that, you got Couturier just having a career year. Back on the blue line, Gosses Bears within the hunt of being a Norris Trophy winner. If he can get really hot, I think he could win it. I really truly believe that. So this team as a whole really believes in themselves right now. So this is a lot of fun. I mean, this has been a lot of fun to watch this happen. And I give uh, Ron Hextall a lot of credit for the patience he showed. And I give Dave Haxtell a lot of credit for developing this team to where it is right now. Um, it's interesting. Uh, you got Peter Morazic in there in goal. You've seen him three times now. Uh, what have you seen from him in a small sample size? Well, it's one thing for sure. He certainly came up with the big saves when need be. Uh, is he flashy? Yeah. Is he acrobatic? Yeah. Uh, he's not the biggest guy in the world, so I would imagine that's, uh, you know, in, in talking to the people in Detroit, that's his forte. But, boy, I'll tell you, he came up with some huge saves against the Montreal Canadiens the other night. And that's the kind of goaltending you can get from a backup. And he understands he's got a position here where, okay, what does the future hold? He's, got, he's going to be the guy for the next couple of weeks here for sure. Uh, whether he plays back-to-back -back on the road, who knows, against Tampa and Florida. But, boy, I'll tell you what, he's got a great opportunity, and he's certainly taking advantage of it right now. Don't see trade deadline was this week. Uh, a lot of people talked about the teams that made the moves, 
Flyers, for the most part, stayed pat. We'll get to Johnny Aduya and what he brings to the team in a second. But uh, were you pleased, or what was your take on uh, Ron Hextall's non-moves, I guess, at the trade deadline? Well, I know that Ron Hextall is old school. And first of all, he's a guy that is held true. <clears throat> he truly believes in working the system. In other words, building through his drafts, building through and under and, and developing the younger players, using the, the farm system for what its purpose is, and that's to develop younger players. And he also believes, and this is probably, and he said this in his press conference, the team chemistry, if you bring in somebody new or you bring in two guys new, that could be a serious effect on your hockey club. Taking a job from other people that have been contributing to your team, that could hurt you. So bringing Oduya in as a seventh is perfect. He's won a Stanley Cup. He's on the bottom part of the hill. But if they do have injuries, he'll be able to play. You never can have enough defensemen. So that's what this is all about. It's about the chemistry of this hockey club. And you can see right now it's working. So why mess with it? Yeah, I saw Bob McKenzie on uh, the uh, television yesterday arguing or throwing out the theory that it, you could say that Wayne Simmons is the trade deadline move because when he comes back, that'll give a spark and an addition to the team. Well, I think Wayne Simmons is the guy that, that uh, uh, is he going to be on that second line? I don't know because they really don't like Jake Voracek on the left side. Okay. So for Simmons to play on the second line with Patrick and Voracek, that's not going to work because Voracek, they had him on the left side. Simmons would have to go to the right. They just don't like Jake at the left side. They like him. They feel he's a lot more productive coming off the off wing on the right side. So what do you do there? Well, this kid Lindblom's played really good, Peter. I mean, really good. Has he scored yet? No. But he has been representative, doesn't look out of place. So think about now you could move Simmons to the third line with Lawton and Wheel. Now, I don't know if Wheel's playing tonight. He hasn't played very, very well. But you could move Simmons down. That makes your third line better. And then you bump somebody off the fourth. I mean, that's possibly what's going well, It's not possibly. I mean, if Lindblom stays, that's very, very good possibility. Three strong lines with a fourth line as a checking line. That'll almost be an embarrassment of riches. We're with Flyers radio analyst Steve Coates. Uh, Coatsy, I know the last time we talked to you, you were bringing up uh, Claude Giroux for the Art Ross trophy, and uh, Bergeron got hurt, right? So maybe that helps his chances uh, to you're, you continue to stick with that narrative that Claude Giroux should be in that conversation. I think Claude Giroux should be in for the for well for the heart the heart trophy. Art Ross is going to be Sorry. whoever wins the scoring championship. He's what eight points behind Kucherov. But when you talk about uh, Giroux, he should be definitely included in the heart. I saw another article today. They said, "Well, let's talk about Nathan McKinnon, McKinnon for the heart trophy." They're not even in the playoffs. <laughs> Cut it out. I mean, he's having a good year. But for some reason, Giroux, Couturier, uh, Voracek leads all the th players in the National Hockey League right now in assists. Gosses there's fourth in defensive uh, scoring. Actually, I think he's third, and he's second in plus minus. Second, very important. It's best defensive award, Norris Trophy. So when you take a look at that, he's got the second best plus minus right now, and I think the combination of most points and best plus minus is Gosses Bear. So he's definitely got to be in the hunt for that. But nobody talks about it, really. And I just love to go another day. I have I, I've been doing really good today. I've read one article about Connor McDavid today. Is that that's a great day for me? <laughs> Steve Coates with us. Hey, uh, how dangerous, Coates, you tonight? Is it to play a team that's fighting for their playoff lives like Carolina? I mean, people look at Carolina and they think to themselves, like, oh, well, it's, but I mean, th th that's a hungry team coming in. Well, every every game's dangerous right now this time of year. Every game, because you got Carolina here tonight. Uh, then the Flyers go to uh, Tampa, uh, and they, you know, they're still in a, a, a race for their first place in their division. They got beat last night by Buffalo. They got Dallas tonight. So, you know, whoever knows what happens tonight in Dallas, how they're going to be on Saturday afternoon. Then from there, you're going to go and take on, I think, the scariest team this time of year right now. Not the best, but the scariest team, and that's the Florida Panthers. They are Red hot. They've got three games in hand on everybody. So, and they've got home games. They play the New Jersey Devils tonight. So they can make hay, and they're going to have us on sa Sunday afternoon. Hey, Coatsy, believe it or not, somebody had me on the radio out in North Dakota to talk about hockey. 
Uh, but the host of the show was a North Dakota gentleman, and he said that I believe when Hackstall was a player that the coach out there deemed him to be the smartest hockey mind he had ever been around. Would you say that this gentleman in your time around him is a extra smart, brilliant hockey mind? He knows the game. There's no two ways about it. He knows the game and understands the game. Yes, I would agree with that totally. Uh, totally. Um, and he, well, one of the things he, he said he, was, look, because they said in North Dakota there was a lot of frustration that the teams got off to a slow start and then they got better. They just came to kind of accept it. And he said one of the reasons was is because this Hackstall was so smart that he was always kind of changing things around and kind of moving the chess pieces and he was always willing to try something even if it didn't work until he finally kind of, boom, got the right thing by the end of the year. Yeah, that's the tale of the tape with, with Dave Hackstall. If you look... Uh, it didn't really work that way last year at the end of the year with with um, um, uh, they went 19 and 19 to finish the season. But the year before that, they did that to make the playoffs. And look at what they're doing now. They're just they're out of sight. But that was what their teams at North Dakota were were famous for was that late rush to be able to get better. So I think that's all part of the educational process. We hear about well, Dave Hackstall is a great teaching coach. Well, he's taught these guys. I mean, look it up. This is a, a sign of a coach who's doing a good job. When all your players improve, look at every one of them. Connect me, Patrick, Gossespierre, Provorov. They improve. Manning, they improve. Yeah. And so if that's happening, and, that, and every one of those guys, as well as everybody in this hockey club, has contributed to the success. And when that happens, it becomes infectious. I mean, it's just right now, right through that room where they understand – that they are as good as anybody, and they can beat anybody. And if they get good goaltending, this could be a lot of fun. Speaking of infectious, i got to take a break because the room is <laughs> filling up here. No, no, Sports that's malodorous. That's the word you're looking for. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Coatsy. <laughs> Steve Coates from the you Flyers guys. Radio <laughs> Network. Best of luck, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coatsy. Take care, we'll buddy. We'll see you soon, pal. Steve Coates, everybody, from the Flyers Radio Network. 